another video today. Today we are baking. That is something that I promised you guys a couple of weeks ago and you know, we went on vacation and did things and I didn't do all of the baking. So what I did was, first off, I bought this notebook at the Holocaust Museum and I think it's a painting that somebody like did and watched, yeah, so Marlene Burns, whoever that is. Uh, I'm an artist assuming, but anyway, this little notebook, I bought it because while we were in the store, Finley was testing these little pens and I needed to buy it because Finley had written in it <laughs> and it ended up costing $15 for this little, I mean, it's for the artwork, obviously, which, you know, happy to support whatever, but now this is going to be my recipe Hi. notebook. We have kids coming in, such as real life. You guys know I don't sugarcoat things here you might hear kids screaming. So this is now my recipe book. So I have gone and I've written down several recipes that I have been wanting to try and I've just been avoiding trying, whatever. One of them is a cinnamon bread for Chris. If you've been around a while, you know that I usually use the, uh, or usually buy the Aldi cinnamon bread, which is great. He loves it, but it's like $5 a loaf. So we're going to try and make some of that today. We're also going to be making some homemade chocolate chip muffins, which again, we usually buy those at Sam's, but I could probably make them taste better and be cheaper if I make them myself. So we're gonna make those today. We're gonna to be making some sandwich bread, some yeast rolls to get into the freezer because Chris wants some yeast rolls and I'm gonna like double or maybe even triple that batch because Chris will eat half of them within like five seconds. And then the final thing that we're gonna to make today, which I'm really excited about, is a homemade coffee creamer. This has been going around um, the like Instagram reels world for the past like month or so I would say because of the fact let me show you that regular coffee creamer is not actually made with cream <laughs> there's literally no cream in regular coffee creamer the first three ingredients are water sugar and vegetable oil and then a bunch of other like whatever sodium caseinate is which it says it's a milk derivative whatever so because of this because a lot, this is like there's been this whole movement you know of people that are trying to do better be better about what we feed our bodies not only like health wise but just budget wise and but also health wise so for me i'm looking at that and i'm like i'm not even getting creamer this isn't even creamer you know it's oil so i've been seeing all these recipes i'm gonna try one out and i'm gonna Take you guys along with me to test that out so the first thing that i need to do is to get the stuff that needs to rise rising because that's obviously what takes the longest so that is the yeast rolls and the sandwich bread so let's get started whipping some of that up come along with me as we bake all of the things and get going this is video one of two in this series over the next week or two you're also going to see me baking a lot of meals so freezer meals we're going to be doing i'm very excited about that one as well so stay tuned i'm trying to aim that one more towards the beginning of the month um so that it can be for the month of july um if i do it now we still have stuff we need to eat through i figured we could just take this next week or a week and a half or whatever and eat through stuff that we have there's a lot of changes coming to my channel i'm gonna think i'm just gonna make a whole video talking about it um where i've been feeling my heart being led and being taken me lately but for today let me just go ahead and start making all of the goodies. Let's start getting this bread recipe going. Actually, we'll do the yeast rolls first because they have to rise for an hour and a half. So let's make some yeast rolls, shall we? We need my mixer. Dad says that you need to go scoop doggy poo poo, right? Okay, got the mixer with my dough attachment. Always a necessity. We're doing yeast rolls first. We need sugar, yeast, salt, flour, butter. Sugar, flour, yeast. My big old thing of bread flour. This was the best Timu purchase that I've made recently, by the way, because this container is absolutely perfect for the uh, 25 pound bag of flour from Sam's Club. And this was like not that expensive on Timu, like super cheap. Anyway, salt, no, butter, right? Yeah, butter. But I think you need the butter at the end. Yeast. Does anybody else keep their yeast in the refrigerator? My uh, mama told me to do that. I don't know if it's actually what happens, but okay. 
So, like I said, I wrote down all our recipes, but I am going to, I guess I'll link all the recipes below that I used because I did find them all online. Most of them I have tried before. The bread one for sure, the sandwich bread is delicious. So yeah, we'll definitely link that one below and I'll link them all, we'll do it all. Okay, so we need our little dough attachment. And then the next thing that we are going to do for the yeast rolls is add water, a fourth a cup of water. Call your dad. I think it's warm water. Okay, water, a tablespoon of yeast. I mean, at least I, uh, this is dry active yeast. So we're gonna add a tablespoon of that and then two tablespoons of sugar. I have a lot of yeast to go through. Yikes. Need to start using all of that. My grocery list this month, I feel like is going to be a lot different than what it has been in past months, just because I feel like I'm, or I know I'm going to be buying a lot of baking ingredients that I don't usually buy, like flour, not, maybe not flour, but sugars, different types of sugars, stuff like that, that I'm gonna have to buy with, um, since I, I'm doing a lot more baking. There's aren't stuff things that I normally buy. So that sock of like the Aldi sock of should be interesting. Okay, so then you add the rest of the water, the salt, and half of the flour. Plus two tablespoons. Very precise measurements I got going on here. I've never tried this recipe. Let's hope it's good. Okay, a teaspoon of salt. This was another little Timu find was my little uh, measuring spoons. I actually wish I had bought more than one of them. Oh my gosh, this flour is heavy. And then we need to do half the flour, which is a cup. So we need to find this little guy, a little cup measuring spoon in here and add in a cup of flour. One thing I don't like about this cup, I used it for something pizza dough recently is that it like forms a well in there for some reason. And I don't know, that doesn't always been this. Okay, now we're gonna mix this together. Where'd my whisk go? Bryson's staring at me. Just until it combines, and then you're gonna add the rest of the flour. Yes. Now, maybe I should have doubled this because I forgot that we were tripling this recipe but we'll just do it again, I guess, because I forgot all about that, but. Okay, we're gonna let this go for two to three minutes on the minimum set. Okay, I decided that I need to knead this on my own <laughs> and not let this, it actually did say to knead it by yourself, but I was like, <laughs> my machine can do it, you know? Why would I do work if my machine can do it, but. The consensus is that the machine cannot do it. So listen to the recipe, folks. So we're just gonna do it, you know? We're just gonna need this sucker. It did say in the recipe that it would be a little bit sticky to begin with. I don't wanna stick my fingers in there. Um, eh, but here we go. I think it just needed a little bit. I'm wondering if I wasn't supposed to add um, that two tablespoons of water. It said add remaining water though, so I did. Now, we are going to take my little spritzer and we're gonna spritz the bottom of this bowl just so that the dough doesn't stick when it's rising and we are going to allow this to rise for 90 minutes. I am changing course a little bit on the whole making multiple batches of the yeast rolls because what if they're not good? You know, like we've never tried these before. What if Chris doesn't like them? So, and he's a yeast roll like connoisseur. Like he knows a good yeast roll. So I'm going to, I'm just gonna brush this into my sink. I'm going to let this, let, let us try this one. And if he likes it, 
then, I mean, it wasn't hard to make them. So I will just make another batch. You know, make another batch. Okay. We're gonna use the same bowl. We're making yeast sandwich bread. So I don't really think this is that big of a deal. Maybe I'll rinse it out. Cause I gotta let the yeast brew. We'll rinse this. Let's rinse it. Okay, rinse out the bowl. We are gonna move on to the bread. Now y'all, let me tell you about this bread. We have tried several different breads over the past few weeks since I've been trying to find a bread recipe that we really like. And this one, this sandwich bread recipe is perfect. Like literally perfect. I believe it makes two, no, it made one loaf. So I'm gonna double this. This recipe we are doubling and we are gonna make two loaves of bread of it because my family loved it so, so much. Like so much. They ate it in like half a second. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this bread recipe. This one you have to let rise as well and it takes forever. So first thing we gotta do is proof the yeast. That was one thing that this recipe suggested doing that the other one, that all the other ones I've tried did not suggest, um, was proofing your yeast and then also using milk when I just got out of the refrigerator. So none of the other bread recipes that I've ever tried require you to use milk. They all use like water and yeast and sugar and flour, you know, normal things. This one wanted you to use milk. So I think that's pretty cool. So we're gonna add a cup of water and it says the hottest that you can get it out of your spigot. So not boiling, but hot out of your spigot. And of course my uh, sink's trying to be silly. Okay, so we have a cup of water and then we're gonna add a fourth of a cup of milk. And they say that these two combinations, the hot water and the cold milk, is what is perfect for activating your yeast. Again, I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, it's my wedding ring. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's, it was seriously so delicious. And then the last thing that you are going to add in, obviously, is your yeast. So we are doing one packet of dry active yeast, which is also two and a quarter. Yeah, two and a quarter. Two and a quarter teaspoons um, of yeast. So make that what you will. Then we are going to whisk that together and you need to let it sit for about five minutes and it's going to get really, if your yeast is, uh, alive, it's going to get really like foamy on the top, kind of like what the top of a beer looks like when you, um, oh, no, we need sugar. Look at me. <sighs> Two tablespoons of sugar. So the big guy of sugar. This is all the sugar I have left, which means how are we gonna cook all the things we have to cook? Anyway, okay, two tablespoons of this, and we are going to let that activate. And while that is like working, I'm gonna add another serving of everything since we are doubling this. So see you in a minute, and I'll show you kind of what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so this is what it should look like. See how it has that foamy, layer on the top. If your yeast is alive, this is what it should look like. So now we need to go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it says that you can use oil or butter. I'm just going to use oil to conserve my butter. Side note, Chris is going to the store. Yeah, because I have, do I? Okay, that's what I was checking. Yep, I do have enough. Okay. Um, Chris is going to go to the store and get more sugar for me, but Anyway, okay, so we need a fourth of a cup of oil or you could use a fourth of a cup of salted butter. And then we also need to add the salt, which is one and a half teaspoons of salt. I think I'm gonna order like 14 more of these measuring spoons because I keep having to wash it. I mean, it's all the same ingredients that are going in it, but I don't know, I just keep washing it. And then the final thing that we need to add is, oh my goodness, y'all, we doubled this. <laughs> so we need to add, what are that spin? We need to add another fourth of a cup. We about ruined this bread. Another fourth of a cup of oil and then another teaspoon and a half of salt. And then the final thing that we need to add is 
the flower. Now, this one does um, need on in the mixer. It actually calls for it to need in the mixer. So you don't have to worry about hand kneading this, which was one of the reasons why this was such an, like the winner for me, um, as far as, as far as, uh, recipes go. So we are going to add eight cups of flour. And this is, I think I mentioned already, but this is the bread flour to three, like kind of get it all mixed together. And then we're gonna put it on medium for seven minutes to knead it all together until, and it should pull apart from the sides, you know, and fill, make a ball. Okay, y'all, this one kneaded perfectly. This dough is literally so perfect, I'm obsessed. Okay, there we go. I have another greased bowl and we are just going to toss this one in here. Now this one is not a specific rising time like the yeast rolls are. This one, it says to allow it to rise to double in size, which should fill this bowl and be like overflowing. But look how good that just peeled away from that bowl. I don't even have to wash that. I can reuse it for the next thing. Okay, adding this to my pile of rising things. Let me show you what this one looks like already. This one has been rising for about 30 minutes and it's already almost doubled, I would say, in size. So I got some good yeast going on around here. Okay, so Chris ran to the store to get me more sugar because I completely ran out and I think the cinnamon, well, I know the cinnamon bread and the chocolate chip muffins call for sugar and that is all the sugar that we have left. So Chris went to get more sugar, but while we're waiting for him to do that, why don't we go ahead and make the homemade coffee creamer because I'm excited about that one. So let's get all the ingredients together for that and get it started. Um, yeah, let's get going. Now this recipe, I do want to say I got from um, Mandy in the making, but I think that there are several that um, several people on Instagram that have been sharing their different ones. But the one we are going to be making today is a maple and brown sugar one because that just sounded so delicious to me. So I'm just grabbing my maple syrup, which is this is literally what we bought this for, but you can use it on pancakes and, and all of that stuff as well. So we're going over to the stove for this one, friends, and I am so excited to see how this turns out. Okay, friends, so I am so excited for this one. I cannot even tell you. So we are starting off with some half and half. I think you can use heavy whipping cream as well if you want it to be a little bit more creamy, but I don't know. I like it on the lighter side. So you add two cups to a saucepan that is on medium heat. And then to that, we are also going to add an entire container of sweetened condensed milk. So we are having real milk, real milk in our creamer. Who would have thought? We only want this on medium. We do not want it to get too hot. If it gets too hot, I don't really know what'll happen. But Mandy said not to let it get too hot. So we're listening to Mandy. Then we are going to be adding two tablespoons of brown sugar to this mixture. You can use light or dark, doesn't really matter. Now we're listening to Ed Sheeran. <laughs> and then you're also going to add two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. Again, you probably could also use just like regular old pancake syrup, but it wouldn't give you the same effect, you know? And then the final thing that we are going to add, we're gonna get the salt out of there first. That might be sugar, but we don't know, so we're gonna have to risk it. And then we are gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I like vanilla, so I'm not even worrying about the extra that's falling in there because I am a big vanilla fan. Then we're just gonna give this a stir and let it all kind of marry together. And you want to heat it up, but not let it, oh my gosh, this smells divine. Like, divine. Oh my gosh, why have I not been doing this my whole life? Okay, so you want to heat it up just till it's warm, just so kind of everything can get married in. She, I'm just going to like stick my finger in it. It's still cold. Yum. And let it cool down completely before you add it to a refrigerator safe um, container. And then it is supposedly good. You're supposed to go, according to all the, the things that I watched, you're supposed to go by the date 
on your half and half bottle um, for when you get rid of it, which for mine is July 20th. So we got until July 20th. Okay, ignore all of my disaster of mess. Let me just give you an overview of my kitchen right now, y'all. <laughs> this is real life, all of the things. Okay, so in the video, she actually used a like really cute mason jar, but I have this shaker bottle. So that's what we are going to use, but it has cooled down. And do you think I can do this without spilling it? <gasps> I did it, look how creamy that looks. And my bottle is the perfect size. So now we are going to store this in the refrigerator so for about two weeks. It is creamy. Okay. okay. Yay, I made homemade coffee creamer. I'll leave the recipe for this below as well. Chris has come to the rescue with some cha-ching sugar. How many dollars was this cha-ching sugar? Three nineteen for sugar. I wonder what they sell it for. It sounds good. Okay, that's all I'm gonna be able to fit in that. Let's make cinnamon bread, shall we? You need half a cup of softened butter. So we are going to throw that stick in there that's been sitting on the counter. Three fourths of a cup of granulated sugar and a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. Add sugars and butter. Okay. We gotta switch this thing out. We don't need the dough one anymore. We're going for a whisker. A whiskey whisker now. Okay. A fourth? A fourth of a cup of packed brown sugar and then three fourths of a cup of granulated sugar. So one, two-y. Hopefully this is good. This is Chris's thing. This is your cinnamon bread. We're gonna hope this is this is good. Okay, now we need to beat this for three minutes until it is all nice and combined. Okay, now to this, we are going to add one egg. A teaspoon of vanilla, there it is. I'm losing all my stuff, y'all. Again, we like vanilla, so I'm not worried about the extra falling in there. And then a cup of this. One, two. This said it was an Amish uh, recipe. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I guess it's true, but um, the Amish made this cinnamon bread recipe, which means it must be good. Okay, so we're gonna beat this together and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, you're supposed to add the rest of this like while it's going, so excuse the noise, but then you are going to add in baking soda. So we need a teaspoon of baking soda, and then two cups of flour, and then we are going to use that to you know, sort of Again, this cup is the best, but we're gonna add that in. Two cups of flour, and then that should make the batter. Okay, flour is in. Okay. I'm gonna stop this and use my regular mixer, my like whisker, whisk just so that I can speed this process up a little bit and get this all nice and combined. Okay, so now that we have the batter, we need to make the uh, sugar, cinnamon sugar topping. We're gonna use this little dishy dish because that's what's there. We need to add a third of a cup of sugar and one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon to make the mixture. And then you're just gonna kinda Cinnamon is so like one and a half. Cinnamon is so like fragrant. Side note, I've heard that if you sprinkle this around like your door frames, um, then you won't have um, bugs, like bees and stuff. Okay, so we need a third of a cup of sugar 
but I'm going to be honest here and just say that I'm eyeballing it. Looks about right. We're going to mix all that together and then we're ready to layer the batter with the cinnamon sugar and bake it. This one's pretty easy to do y'all. Okay. So what it says to do is to pour about half of your batter in a greased thing. So I'm going to use my olive oil spray, which was another amazing team of find. So we're going to pour half of this batter in the pan evenly. Take like a fork or a knife or whatever and swirl it in. So we're going to just evenly pour about half of this on there. That's about half. And then we're going to take our fork, it says, and swirl it like so. I mean, I don't know that I'm going to have beautiful swirls. <laughs> I'll try my hardest. So that's kind of what the first layer looks like. And then we are going to add the rest, do the same thing over again. So add the rest of the batter and then swirl the cinnamon sugar on top again. It's supposed to. It smells good, I can tell you that. Then you are to add two tablespoons of melted butter and pop it in the oven on 350 for, how long? How long do we do this for, Brittany? 50 minutes? Well, $50, 50 minutes, okay. Okay, so Chris told me to skip uh, the butter. So this is going in the oven for 50 minutes and we're gonna make chocolate chip bread now. So we have my bowl cleaned out and in it we are going to add half a cup of cocoa powder. Now, this recipe says Dutch cocoa powder. A, I don't even know what that is. And B, I don't know, this will be fine, right? So we need two cups of flour. Let's just do the sugars while we're here. So you need half a cup of brown sugar. and a fourth of a cup of regular granulated sugar. So I definitely needed more granulated sugar. I'm excited for this recipe because I'm hoping that it can replace the chocolate chip muffins that I buy at Sam's Club. Okay, so we did the cocoa, the sugars, we need baking powder. Yep, that is correct. In you go. Nope, mm -mm, that says two teaspoons of baking. So that's we need three more of these. Uh. Two teaspoons of baking powder and then half a teaspoon of baking soda. So I just had things a little bit backwards, which is fine. You know, as long as you correct yourself, all is well, you know, Mis mistakes happen. And it says my chocolate chips. It sounds like cup of chocolate chips. Should we over chocolate chip it? You know, I don't know. Okay. Y'all, these powders just want to they want to get me. Okay, so two cups of flour. And then, a, you know what? I'm going to use this cup for my chocolate chips because that'll work, right? And then a cup of chocolate chips. It did call for dark chocolate chips. I don't like dark chocolate chips. So I'm using um, milk chocolate plus that's what I had and I didn't want to go buy something else for it. So we used milk chocolate, you know? Sue me, recipe. Sue me. So you need to whisk that all together and then you add the wet ingredients in another bowl and then we're going to add them together. Pretty darn simple. If you ask me, maybe I can show you what I'm doing. There we go. Look at that. Nice. So it looks like a powdered um, cake mix or a powdered brownie mix, doesn't it? Okay. Use this one. Okay. So a cup of buttermilk two eggs that I also didn't get out. So great, this. You're gonna, hopefully, the goal is that hopefully you'll see me evolve into a much better baker. What am I gonna do with this? I got some cleaning to do. You're gonna see me evolve into a much better baker over the course of the next, like, months. Okay, hopefully. Brittany, you're just so fun a half a cup of vegetable oil, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. So, fourth of a cup, half of a cup, done with you, measuring spoon, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm about to be done with you as well. Y'all are making me work too much. 
Okay, we're gonna whisk that together, and then we're gonna add the two things together. Like, how easy is that? I think, I lie to you. Yep, add wet and dry, put them together, add to a pan, and bake it. And, yeah, we're, gonna, we're in good shape, okay. Okay, so we're gonna add it in to the dry and just kind of whisk it all until it forms a batter. It says to fold it, so I'm assuming you don't want it to be, you know, you don't want to beat it all up too much. I don't really know what the difference is on that, but whatever. We don't want any lumps either. I don't want lumpy. This smells good. I don't want lumpy bread, you know. Okay, this is what it looks like. Now we are just going to use this little pan that I'm not sure will fit at all. We might actually make two loaves of this because I thought that this didn't make as much. And then we are going to put it in the pan, put some more chocolate chips on it and bake it. It is that simple. Sprinkle it with, it says another fourth of a cup of chocolate chips. We're just gonna Sprinkle some on top, and then this lovely masterpiece, we gotta even that up a little bit, is gonna go in the oven for 55 minutes. So, adding that to the deliciously baking cinnamon bread. Okay, we have all the things baking. Now I need to clean. This is the realities of baking, my friends, that nobody shows you, but I'm gonna show it to you because Okay, gotta clean this mess up and then we can get some bread in the oven. Okay, we have a clean enough workspace again. And we are going to pat out some, pat out, whatever, form out some rolls. So I have this container, circle these out into rolls. I'm just using all purpose flour for this. We're just gonna pinch them off and roll them out into your rolls. This is just bugging me how sticky this is. I, mean, I might be messing these up by doing this, but I don't even care. They're sticky. Before you bake them, so they're already risen and then they don't really rise in the oven anymore. Is that true? Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, we're gonna let these rise again. Hopefully they do such things. And then for the sandwich bread, since I have both my loaf pans being used currently, I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna make a divider for it. Hopefully a pretty sturdy one, so that I can bake it that way. I, mean, I decided in my head that that would be a good idea, and I do need it to be pretty tall. Perfect, I did it. Okay, so for this bread, you're just gonna punch it down, form it into two loaves, and allow it to rise again until it doubles back in size. So I'm just literally gonna pinch off half of this loaf, half of this dough. And then you're gonna form it into, kind of knead it together until you form it into a long dough. And don't worry about any like creases because the rising process is going to help that dramatically. Now we're gonna let these rise until they double in size again. Okay, so we have this gorgeous chocolate loaf, cake, whatever bread, chocolate chip bread, and then the cinnamon bread as well. And then the two loaves are risen and we're gonna put those in the oven now and the yeast rolls are rising pretty well as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven on 375 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. Look at these gorgeous loaves of bread. This one's definitely way bigger. There might've been a little bit more dough on this side, you know, when I evenly split it. But the yeast rolls are just a fail, I feel like. I don't know, we're gonna try them, see how they taste. But uh, yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they're not rising the way that they're supposed to be. So the easy yeast roll recipe was a lie. I'm glad I didn't like triple it. Okay, here is all of the loot for the day. But 
the big test is tasting things, right? So we're gonna have Chris taste the cinnamon bread for sure because I made that for him, so. If it's not good, it smells delicious. We'll see if the Amish make good cinnamon bread. All right, so, ooh. So this is what it looks like on the inside. You have to tell me the truth. Yeah. What's wrong with it? No. Yeah. Would I eat it again? No. I promise. Yeah. Okay. I promise. Really Cinnamon bread got a yes. The other thing is this. <laughs> crap, <laughs> this crappy pan of yeast rolls. I'm just going to taste that texture right now. I mean, look at them though. But they don't look bad. They don't smell bad. Eat the cinnamon bread first. Let's let Kylie eat a piece of roll. I mean, come on, they actually, look. Is it hot? They're supposed to taste like that on the uh, How do you know? It's what you thought that He's the yeast roll connoisseur, and he'll tell me if it's like. That was a real flavor. So it's like it's not yeast in there. But I put the yeast in there. Look the butter. You didn't have it. The butter is really like the flavor is good. It's like it just doesn't taste yeast in there. It just tastes like a regular roll. So do we like it or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just need more yeast. Uh -huh. like, did you put a lot of butter in there? Did you put butter in there? Mm -hmm. Oh, is this the one that said I could use butter or oil? No, this isn't that one. Yeah. It's not a lot of, it's not a lot of butter. Uh -huh. It's hot. Huh. Okay, well, okay. Well, thank you for coming along with us for our uh -huh. baking today. Uh -huh. I will let you guys know how the coffee creamer is. I don't want to make coffee right now, but I'm. it smells delicious and I'm really excited to try it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any other baking from scratch recipes that I should try, leave them down below for me because I would love to hear them. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday and I will see you on Friday. Bye guys. Yeah.